Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Ricky Kamler. Our next guest had a wonderful role in the Tiny Katie Holmes film, All We Had. But now Eve Lindley is getting the breakout role she so clearly deserves with Jason Siegel's new AMC magical realist show, Dispatches from Elsewhere. Please welcome the wonderful Eve Lindley. Let's hear it. Hey. Hi. Um, last time you were here, like I said, it was for the Katie Holmes film, right? And uh, yeah. it was like your first movie or second movie? Yeah, it was I, definitely my very first movie. Just maybe like two years ago? Gosh, something like that. I guess so. Not that long. Sometimes ago. it feels like ten years ago, and sometimes it feels like two minutes ago. <laughs> You're telling me I'm still on the stage. <laughs> um, but now, look at this. It's Jason Siegel, Sally Field, Andre Benjamin, and you. Yeah. On this poster. Yes. <laughs> what is that sweet. like? It's really wild. <laughs> um, how did this happen? Uh, well deserved, but how? Like, how did it happen? Well. Um, I just I just went in for the audition and um, and I don't know I really didn't think I was gonna get it I was like yeah whatever I'll just like go in I'll just you know do my thing and um, How I much did you know about it what it was going into it um, I didn't know too much um, until my, I got the call back and that's uh, when I like saw who wrote it and created it this guy um, and. Uh, and that was when I was like, oh, this is like, <laughs> this is like a big deal, isn't it? Um, and then I did a call back with him uh, on a Monday and then again on a Wednesday. And then I found out on that Friday that I, oh, is that better? Uh, sorry. No, you were fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and then I found out that Friday that I got it. And then did you start shooting like on Monday? No. no then okay. I had like four months of just walking around New York City being like, maybe one day this my life will change <laughs> like you know just waiting to hear if if the show you know where it was going who else was cast i was cast in like february we didn't start filming until june or july did you know that sally field and andre benjamin were going to be in it as well no no i i found out about sally and richard at the same time as the rest of the world uh it was like in an announcement and then i went down to philly just to like meet everyone and have a fitting. And that was when I found out about Andre and I was like, Oh, oh my God. <laughs> was like, I thought, I thought uh, the character Andre plays uh, Fred Wynn. I thought he was going to be like another unknown person. So I was like, okay. Like Sally Field. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, this is good. Like there'll be someone there that I can like, you know, relate to. And, um, and then, no, yeah, you know, it was... <laughs> what did that feel like? Because within this dynamic, you are kind of the force. I mean, everybody has their own uh, particular objective or quirk, but you are the sort of much more, I think, um, not necessarily dynamic, everybody's dynamic, but you are unafraid, unabashedly unafraid of everybody in here. But it is you, Jason Siegel, Sally Field, Andre Benjamin. So what was it like channeling that? Yeah, it... Uh... I mean, it was it was really fun to like to be so um, to be the force of the group and like to you know bump uh, Andre and I are always butting heads and like Sally and I are uh, you know we we our relationship kind of grows over the, the the few episodes and then of course Peter and I um, it was it was it was cool I mean it took a while to get me to like really you know, go balls to the wall, but, uh, comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of like questions of like how I would exist with this group of people. And did you pose those questions? I mean, Jason is the director of the pilot. He's the right creator of the show. Did you pose those questions to, to Jason? How quickly did you get comfortable with him? Um, pretty quickly. We like had a dinner in, um, in LA once I would just happen to be out there. Um, and yeah, it, he's, I mean, you know, he was never like movie star Jason Siegel to me. He was just like a guy, my friend Jason, you know, um, that I was making something with, which was really cool. He seems to be, in t and I don't want to, I don't want to speak for him, but I'm sure you don't, but he seems in the last few years to be sort of intentionally removing him st himself from movie star Jason in a way. Yeah. I don't, um, I don't know too much about that, but, um, I, yeah, I guess this is sort of a comeback for him of sorts. Um, you get on set with, uh, well, actually tell me about, tell me about your character. Um, I play Simone, um, and she is, uh, she's an art school dropout. She's, uh, 
she's a bit of a mess. She's sort of um, in this place in life where I think she doesn't really, uh, she doesn't really know what's coming next, and she doesn't really know like how to make sense of what is going on. And um, and so she finds this game, this scavenger hunt, where suddenly everything makes sense, and like suddenly she can be, you know. Uh, the confident woman that she wants to be and and she meets all these people and um yeah it's a really topsy turvy story with a lot of twists and turns and a lot of uh surprises and yeah i i mean i can't give too much away but um i hope this isn't giving anything away but one of the one of the things that i liked is that um the first episode uh jason's character is kind of a meek man who hasn't really doesn't really know how to be active in his own life and he meets you and you're initially portrayed as what seems like a classic trope of the manic pixie dream girl that could potentially like take it like show him how much more enriching life could be yeah yeah but right away the second episode kind of strips that away and actually builds upon your character and shows us who she is. Did you know that was going to be the case after the first episode? Had you seen all the episodes? Uh, I had them. I haven't seen all of them. I've seen up to three at this point, but um, I, I mean, I immediately like asked him, you know, when I met him about all of that and, and in the, at the end of the pilot, there's a moment where the camera leaves Peter and goes with Simone and then she becomes the lead um, for, you know, an episode. And then after that, it, uh, Janice becomes the lead and then Fredwin. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I mean, I love the idea of like taking an archetype or a stereotype and sort of like th flipping it and um, showing people that there's maybe more going on there than they originally thought. Um, and that's, that's sort of, yeah, that's definitely what we did with Simone. Like you definitely think like, oh, this is the classic manic pixie dream girl, you know? Um, what was it prior to flipping it? What was it like getting the chance to play the classic manic pixie dream girl? Um, it was, Peter, a, come with me. Yeah, yeah. Like let's go on an adventure. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun actually. You haven't heard the shins or whatever <laughs> the garden state line. Oh, I love the Smiths. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was a lot of fun. Like, yeah. I mean, I literally like give him like a headphone and I'm like, let's listen to music. And like, you know, it was. Is that when the first time we hear the phosphorescent song? Yes, right. I believe so. Yeah. I love that song. It's a great song. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of fun. It's not a role that I ever really thought I would get to play. You know, like I was. Why? Well, I always sort of, you know, was doing like guest star recurring under fives. Um, being like the barista or like the bartender or like whatever. And I just sort of thought... What does under five mean? Is that under five lines? What I think so, yeah. Oh, okay. I think that's what it means. Industry um, term. Yeah. yeah. And it's like a little industry term for you. Um, but Folks I, in the biz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I never really saw myself as a romantic lead. I never thought a trans actress would be the romantic lead uh, on a show like this. Um, Without it being about that. Yeah. Which it's not. Yeah, this, this is very much, uh, you know, it's not like a queer show. It's no. it's just a show um, for people. And um, I, it's really great that she gets to exist in that context as a queer woman, but like not, you know, nobody is making an example of her like she you know she just is a, a person in the story right the story is not her fight for her identity or her fight for some sort of uh freedom amongst oppression of some kind right. it's a much more existential feeling that has to do with her career her her ambition and all, all of right. those things right yeah. yeah and like the fact that her life is kind of going nowhere at the moment <laughs> did you ever ask him about that or wonder what made him interested in, in, in doing that or if it was something that ever occurred to him that he was doing that was so radically different than most stories that get told? Yeah, I definitely, I was curious about it. Um, and I think, you know, I think as like the, the changing tides of media and Hollywood, um, you know, I think he just, he just sort of wanted to, to get on that, uh, be on the right side of history or whatever, you know? Um, so like, don't, don't press too much. 
for on a good thing. Like don't don't look, yeah. It's like don't don't look a gift horse in the mouth or something or something right. like that. I was right? like, are you sure you don't want like right. Miley Cyrus for this role or you know? Like, Suddenly he's gonna go. Oh wait a second, is she available? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, no, I mean that's it's be curious if you know. I don't want to divulge any of his information, sure. but. When you approach uh, as a as a as a trans actress, when you approach a role where those sort of uh, that history is not necessarily told on screen, as it is normally told, because there I think is an assumption that um, trans women uh, or trans lives have sort of one story that needs to be told. It's like an overcoming story of some kind. Yeah. Do you? What sort of background do you do for that character? Do you think about for that character? I mean, I think it, I mean, it just, when it's not about the overcoming or the coming out or like the transition story, then it's just a character, you know? So it's sort of easy and sort of self-explanatory in a weird way. Yeah. But I guess also, um, you know, there are things about Simone that are specific to the fact that she is trans. And we see uh, in future episodes, like there are certain things that she she puts a limitation on herself or she holds herself back because she uh, doesn't feel worthy. And like, I think um, for me that like came directly out of like the trans thing. So like that's sort of how I married those two things. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, you know, I don't know if that answers your question no, exactly. It, 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 no, it actually does answer my question. I'm wondering if you don't mind expanding on that a little bit as to how those things, while not necessarily told within the story, came came together for you in terms of portraying her. Yeah. I mean, it all kind of just came together like clockwork, probably because of my personal yeah. history um, and, you know, how scared she would be of dating Peter or, you know, falling in love with Peter um, I mean, I think all women in New York are like, wow, dating and love is like really crazy. <laughs> it's like really uh, a shit show here. Um, <laughs> um, am I allowed to? Yeah, you yeah? can curse. Yeah. Okay, cool. Especially if you're talking about dating. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really the only time I ever curse. Um, so yeah, no, I mean, it just... it just why, be why is it such a shit show, you think? In New York? Yeah. Is it the idea that there are so many options? Is it the idea that we're surrounded by people? I mean... Is it the idea that we're all, like, ambitious and crazy and are trying yeah. to figure out what the next thing is and so we can't sort of settle on what may be the right thing? I mean... It's going to get into it. Yeah, let's discuss, okay? Dating with Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> dating in New York. Transition the show here to dating with Ricky. That's yeah, what it's going to be. That would be good. It could become a dating show, actually. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I think that there's just something about New York. There's so much going on. And we're also like constantly surrounded by people. So there's like this thing where you're like, if you're choosing to be surrounded or to be around another person, like you really have to like them because yeah. you're on the subway with people, you're in, you know, trying to walk on the sidewalk, trying to get around somebody who's walking too slow, you know, like it's just like a small cesspool or something <laughs> like <laughs> um yeah and yeah. that's how i feel about dating <laughs> sounds like it's going great yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i think we have time for a couple questions uh from the audience uh who has the question miles yeah. right here hey hey hello how are you i'm good how are you good thank you awesome um the show is about normal people being thrust into this whole magical experience unlocking a strange mystery, unlocking the secrets of the world. Um, <laughs> is there uh, anything about you that would that compels you as a person um, to unlock the mysteries of the world? If you were approached with a puzzle that could unlock the unknowns, is there something about you that compels you to pursue that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, like, my name is literally Eve, so, like, I, like, bit the apple just to know what would happen, you know? Like, I, I just want to know everything, and, like, any puzzle that's put in front of me, I would probably, I would probably ride that. <laughs> um, I'd like to think I would be the person who, like, pulls the flyer. All of these people pulled flyers, and that's how they get into this, so I'd like to think that I would be the person to pull the flyer. 
I would have to notice the flyer, which sometimes is is my problem if I have like headphones in and my head down. So it's hard to notice things like that in New York because they're everywhere. So eventually yeah. you just start disregarding. Yeah. There's just too much noise. Yeah. And like the first week you move here, you're like, look at all these flyers. I'm going to read every single one of them. And then um, and then like you're here for five years and you're <laughs> just like. Z- t- you know, everything is like completely zoned out. You moved here for the flyers and then you got distracted. I, so sad. <laughs> <laughs> I was told there would be flyers everywhere. <laughs> the streets are paved with flyers. I'm going to New York <laughs> for the flyers. <laughs> uh, one more question from Sarah. Hi. Hey, Sarah. So um, you said you've watched three episodes so far, and as you've been watching the finished product, what do you think of the narration for your character? I thought it was cool. I liked the... Um, there's like a, a moment in the pilot uh, where he says, like, I'm going to give you 20 minutes of your life back and just tell you what you need to know about this person so that we can start the story as opposed to doing like a whole backstory. So you like know who this guy is and stuff. I liked it. I thought it was like short and sweet. And like, you know, we get we really get to get down to the nitty gritty. And, you know, I don't know. Narration can be fun. <laughs> Well, this specifically, though, sort of needs the narration. I mean, it's so much about a sto- like a, almost a fairy tale and a storyteller and some sort of uh, Oz-like creator of the of the whole process project. Yeah, yeah. So there's definitely like a uh, the 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 overall storyteller. There's sort of like a it made me think Into the Woods. I don't know if you know that piece, but mm-hmm. there's like a narrator in that who then gets pulled into the story. Um, and then he gets fed to a giant, but uh, you know, in the, this doesn't that doesn't happen in dispatches. Wait, no one gets fed to a giant in dispatches. Uh, I can't discuss that right now. Actually, if no one's getting fed to a giant. I'm not promoting this show. Uh, there are you. no flyers and no giants feeding on people. What are we even doing here, Eve? <laughs> what a waste of time. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. Um, no, the show is wonderful, and you are so wonderful in it, and it's great to see you get a role like this. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, it comes to AMC March 1st, March right? 1st, which is Sunday, and then... It's um, this Sunday. Yeah, we have a two-night premiere. March 2nd is uh, Simone's big episode, mm-hmm. so... Eve Lindley, everybody, let's hear <laughs> it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 